Hello and welcome to Campaign Comrades, your favorite leftist gaming channel. I'm your host, Matt. With me, as always, are my trusty co-hosts. I'm Mike. What up? It's Andrew. And uh, you may be noticing we're, we're missing our, our fearless leader and uh, normal host, Ben, today. We had an unfortunate loss in the pod family, the best boy, uh, Vin, he will be missed. He was one of the, the best boys to ever do it and a integral part to all of us uh, growing up. So shout out to Vinny. Rest in peace. Love you, boy. Absolutely. Uh, brief moment of silence on the pod for Vin. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we're getting into it today. We got some topics to discuss, some things to get through. You know, the normal the normal people are at it again, but uh, we always like to start it off talking about any of the gaming we've had go on this week. And like, I know no one here wants to hear me talk about our 87 to 100 of Xenoblade <laughs> 3. And no, no it, one wants to hear. On. Is it that? Is it? Is it? The, it's not above 100 yet. No, it no, isn't it's actually because I've been I've been playing more Valkyrie yeah, Alicia good. Was... on the side. Okay, with foppish Got Odin. <laughs> foppish Odin, yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll spare you that. And yeah, I like you about... played a new you played an actual new game. I did. I played a new game. I played uh, the newly released PGA Tour 2K 23, of which. Uh, was a two-year hiatus from PGA Tour 2K21. And, oh, I did not you know, know that. Yeah, so, so the golf games have been, it's been interesting. It's, it's having a resurgence. You know, we had the Tiger Woods games in the early 2000s. Then Tiger got himself into a, a, a little bit of hot water, if you're familiar with the, the man uh, or hot key, whatever if you, you believe the stories. About. Uh, Leave Tiger alone. <laughs> and that kind of ended the Tiger Woods games. And then we had uh, a Rory culture. PGA back Tour in game. Yeah, exactly. Canceled. Um, and then we had the Rory EA PGA Tour in like 2012. And then it essentially kind of dropped off in terms of real AAA like golf sports games for well, to an extent, a couple of years. Uh, to, ahead, to an yeah. extent, golf kind of lost those like name recognition, like household names for a little bit. Yeah, hey, Bubba Watson. Well, yeah, but like, how long was he like relevant in golf? Like two years? Like yeah. Rory McIlroy? Yeah, like, like he had like a like a four year stretch. Rory's still relevant, but a hundred percent that there was a, there was a a good five years where golf really struggled to have like a main guy. Like a front, and now, a front now they've got quite a. Yeah, now they got quite a few, but so the and that's part definitely part of why you you saw a drop off in golf viewership and in games being played. So companies weren't developing. Every them. league needs a front man. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Um. So then in I believe two thousand and eighteen, a smaller studio, HB Studios, released uh, a a true golf sim that was realistic as opposed to being more arcade ish, which has kind of been the games we had seen and they were okay. I played, I played their uh, 2019 game, which was called the golf club, if I'm remembering correctly. And it wasn't branded. It wasn't PGA tour licensed and it was fine. Uh, but then they got purchased by 2k and came out with 2k 21, which Again, was still mostly developed by HP Studios when they were small, so it still wasn't fully AAA. Uh, but then they had the full resources of 2K for the most recent game that I was playing this week. And I gotta say, the gameplay is fun. It's it's it hits, you know, it hits that button. It makes makes me feel good I, I, when I flush a drive. But overall, it is still underwhelming in terms of a like triple a 
sports game experience. The visuals just aren't really there yet for a next, especially for a next gen. Like it looks like a, a PS4 game still, um, yeah. like an uh, a I noticed earlier that one. Playing. Yeah. It's just not as crisp and the like model renderings. Like I'm okay with the course being the courses look fine. It's honestly the characters, the, the crowd and the golfers are just very basic models. Like the, you see, I you wish, at, I wish we'd go back to the old crowds in old sports games where they were just paper cutouts that would bob <laughs> up and down. just bopping up and down. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like these are honestly. not far off. They, they barely, they don't even move when the ball goes into the crowd. Like it just skips by them mm-hmm. slash through them. <laughs> and they, yeah. they kind of do a little, little bit of the wee bowling jump, combat golf, but that's about it. Holes through the NPCs. <laughs> oh shit. That's, 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 I will say though, you did, idea, but going you did back some great to our there <laughs> by not mentioning the real golf games, uh, including Mario golf, you know, we sports golf. Yeah, how dare you? Like, those are the arcade ones. <laughs> They're good. No, they just yeah. don't fit into the sim, sim style. Uh, but yeah, like you look at the character models and like the particularly the pros. Like they have, they have because it's PGA Tour license. They have some pros in it, and I didn't play with any of them, but I did look at the models and like they just have no definition. Like their arms just look like tubes like just skin colored tubes there's no like veins or like muscular definition um you're trying so to overall, see you know, veins yeah man i want to come on make me you, feel you want to see as they're torquing that that club down he wants to see the ripple through the arm yeah. muscle <laughs> exactly uh but so it's fun a little disappointing from a graphics perspective, uh, but I'm enjoying it. But the thing that I thought was also funny about that release is the day it went live as a game, EA Sports, who had previously made the PGA Tour licensed golf games with Tiger and Rory that I mentioned, announced that they were uh, also reviving their, their golf game and they'll be releasing that in the spring. And I got to say the trailer that they released makes it look visually much better so i'll be dropping another uh 70 bucks on a golf game this spring to see if see how that works out but uh very petty isn't that very isn't that very similar of ea to release be like oh someone else is releasing something that we've done before oh we're doing it too you know yeah that with dead space exactly (laughs) so very ea move um for one and for it i'm all for the golf games i think so, but you you were saying that you know this game you know didn't live up to the visual uh, expectations that you would have for a modern title. We've seen that a lot uh, recently. There was uh, this is a minor segue, but we've seen that with the uh, pre-release uh, info for Gotham Knights, which has now indicated that the next gen versions of the game do not run at more than thirty frames per second and don't have options on them. Uh, That's crazy. You know, yeah. yeah that, Remember that they canned the PS4 and Xbox One versions of this game. So, like, if they can't get the PS5 and the Xbox Series to run that at 60, like, what was that thing going to run like on PS4? Like, we looking at, like, 15 frames? And, like, how is that even possible when they made the Arkham games? Like, isn't this the same engine? Okay. No, 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 no. No. Okay. They did not make the Arkham games. They yeah. made Arkham Origins, the one Arkham game that people don't know. Okay, like. okay. <laughs> that's okay. the that's the little secret that they slid in there. I get confused but, with um, these Batman games. Yeah, because the Rocksteady's making Suicide Squad kill the Justice League, which okay, is yes, slated yes. for next year, which looks much better. Um, but the it's you know it's become an issue really where games kind of release you know partially finished or not visually up to date or you know buggy and shitty you know to be more cross with it. Um, and, you know, some, you know, you know, a, a hero emerges, maybe, you know, as sarcastically as I can be. Um, maybe Ubisoft's new creative uh, studio effort thing <laughs> is going to fix gaming. Right, guys, they're going to, you know, they're going to make it so that the studios have more freedom to create the games that they want. 
They're going to help them create better games so that at launch they're not, you know, as visually degrad- uh, degraded and not having the bugs and issues that, you know, Ubisoft games have been plagued with on launch for a little while. Um, do, do we trust Ubisoft here to do this right? Are they our I want to know, like, what, they, uh, what they're doing to allow this more freedom for creatives uh, particularly. Like, what are your action items there? What are you, what are you doing, Ubisoft? <laughs> well, you see, the- one of my favorite parts of this article that we're talking about right now is uh, they, they gave me another one of my, my favorite, the pillar analogies. You know, everyone loves building yes. companies on yes. pillars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and reportedly, the new structure will be like pillars, each supporting Ubisoft <laughs> by concentrating on its own expertise while say, staying away from a centralized organization. This is this is such a great corporate uh, like strategy. Like from from my being in a corporate role for my professional career, corporate stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, we all got to yeah gotta make some. We all got to make the money to to pay for our food and houses because this is a fucked up society. But uh, I'm spending all mine on a car. And then I can live <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> yeah. So. The just I just love that corporations seem to always do this. You have just like these like five year flows where they're like, we're going to be more centralized and come together. No more silos. <laughs> and then they do that. And like, you know, mm-hmm. they they get to the, the centralized point and then they're like, well, we think strategy makes more sense. We're going to go back to a pillar approach, a more siloed structure with independent. I, I love just, the word siloed. It's hilarious. I love that when corporate, like corporate stooges use that word. It's so good. One of my you, you know, those, uh, those corporate stooges never been on a farm in the, the old grain silos no. out there. Never. <laughs> but to me, to me, you know, you're right that they do go in these cycles like that. Um, but one of the other reasons I think, uh, we're in this cycle or you're going back to like the decentralization has got to be because of like Bitcoin and NFTs like that, that idea of like decentralizing shit and especially, you know, in this, uh, yeah, but we're recentralizing uh, now with, uh, Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even Bitcoin, even Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going, yeah, exactly. They're going through their own. They're on the ce- we were too siloed. But yeah. They're on the centralization plan right now. For- yeah. Amazing. We we love the just corporate minutia that drives our world. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things. Like when I hear stuff like this spoken out loud, I kind of just like slowly, like the tinnitus starts to kick in in my ears and I slowly just start mm-hmm. to stare off into the distance. Like it's all just nothing speak to me. I mean, it's, it is just made up words. Mm-hmm. I mean, all words are made up. Ooh, mind blowing. <laughs> Get me on Joe Rogan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just kind of like, I mean, good on ubisoft for trying something but doing something very like minimal about it but i don't think it's going to lead to much or any significant change going on with the the day-to-day runnings of ubisoft yeah no Uh, i mean like like andrew said it's just part of that cycle and you know in five years they're going to change it again yeah and like you know eve's still in charge so until that happens my my hopes for ubisoft remain yeah, I can I can imagine that this has an effect on like the the lower tier, the like the fringe tier of the bottom workers who get like jerked around the worst here back and forth. Absolutely. And yeah, maybe like- maybe there's some intentional like shaking there where they're trying to like shake loose some people without like outright firing them so they can bring in, you know, like the the public teacher model where you try to yeah. shake off your your older teachers for the well, and then like one of the other things um going on here is like you know and and why i asked like what the actual um you know like action items for how you're going to give more freedom to the creatives is because when you know corporations create these pillars or re-silo like a lot of what happens is that you know eve is just giving some of his power to lower level executives so the head of those silos are still making the decisions so it isn't the you know, creatives actually making the stuff that have any say, you know, they just have a different boss that is, you know, a lower level, like, you know, mid-level manager 
who probably has some even more, you know, chip on his shoulder and animosity towards workers um, in, instead of, you know, the Eve who is sitting in his ivory tower, um, you know, just making the decisions, you know, without even knowing the, you know, the individuals that they impact. The French were big into the ivory trade, right? If I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. So good, good analogy there. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's one of those things, you know, it's kind of beca- kind of become one of our weekly topics almost, you know, discussing the, the bumblings and stumblings of Ubisoft and their, you know, many goings. You know, other, a company who we don't discuss very often, who, you know, kind of does this themselves too, you know, a little bit of Epic and Tim Sweeney action. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Ep- Epic is pointing the finger and saying it's not fair and that, you know, Google, Google is scheming against us. And they're <laughs> telling everyone they're paying off big sums of money to people to not make app stores. And it's just kind of one of those things, you know, uh, Epic is always trying to stir something up. Any thoughts and feelings on what's going on here with Epic and Google? The funniest thing that I saw uh, in this story is that one of the uh, the involvement of Match.com in like dating sites in this battle. I was going to say Match.com who owns essentially like 80% of the dating site market. Yeah. So I, I just not a thought monopoly. that crossover of, of video games and uh, well, yeah, because dating you see, Epic needs story. to keep players perpetually single by no lifing these games exactly. and flushing them over to match.com <laughs> brand sites mm-hmm. where they can endlessly cycle through, you know, a list that will never match with them, you know, in the hopes that one day they'll get a match who isn't a, you know, porn bot. Yeah. And to steal their public the info. subscription. Or yeah, or an OnlyFans uh, advertisement, or no, just like the Match. dot com, like subscription to fucking you know swipe, swipe unlimited swipes versus uh, yeah, the three that they give you a day or whatever. Just like I don't know, do we think this is a? I still think Google's taking a better approach to this than how Apple's done it, which is just like we're taking thirty percent of your money, or you're not going to be able to beyond iphone it's weird because google in the past hasn't been very they haven't cared super much like a lot if someone uses the android kernel and makes like their own branch of os with its own uh uh, app store like amazon Mm -hmm. like all fire tv is is just an android kernel with a skin on it and like for the longest time the amazon app store was just the play store but separate and like you could uh, side boot it onto Android phones. It's just kind of like this this slap fight, this legal like finger pointing battle between Epic and Google. I always just find it funny that this stuff is still going on, where uh, Epic feels so slighted by the you know the big players you know telling them how to do their business on their marketplace. I know I recently watched a. Uh, a video breaking down what it's like being a, a content creator uh, trying to navigate the tech waters and like what it's like to try to get like pre-release, you know, hardware for reviews and embargoes and all that uh, nonsense mm-hmm. and how certain companies play favorites, obviously, you know, to media, who's going to give them a favorable response, you know, to give them, you know, tech earlier, you know, give them more time to get their uh, testing and reviewing done before the embargo lifts. So they have more time to get a better quality video and how companies, uh, they pointed out Apple in particular, like to hold um, certain creators hostage where they won't give them the stuff until day of, and they won't have the time to do like a thorough testing or anything like that. And basically have to put out a subpar video to like take a hit on their views it's like the the deep cabal network of like Apple, Google, like all these uh, different tech giants. It's an interesting. Uh, I can send that video along to the group if anyone's interested. It's a very uh, like interesting view into the behind the scenes, behind the curtains of some of these big companies. Yeah, I'd definitely be interested because that's like one thing that you know I, I think has been coming up more and more in some of our. Um, our discussions is like the, you know, how 
video games, you know, release, uh, you know, with these these uh, NDAs to creators and, and how they're using NDAs to creators and like one day review embargo lift. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that's just like a whole other interesting, you know, uh, branch of analysis to be looking into. So definitely interested in, in looking yeah. into that. You know, picking favorable media so that you can like paint yourself in a good spotlight and that type of stuff. Um, in a way, you know, you're holding a person hostage on their livelihood there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because sure. they know that if you can't put out a video or content, you know, to the best of your ability, that one of their favorable um, outlets can because they had more time. Like you're you're going to be controlling the cycle and discussion there. And there's a lot of abuse that goes on with that. And uh, to kind of transition this a little bit, uh, we've had some discussion about, you know, some of our, you know, one of my personal friends and so Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> I know everyone here has their, you know, we're all Nintendogs at heart. Uh, Honestly, some how discussion. can you not be? True. I mean, unless all you were uh, exposed to was like, if, imagine growing up right now where Nintendo is the Mario movie. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah like we we could have a very like a a resurgence of sega fans with the sonic movie if sonic continues to surpass mario but i digress uh there was a labor complaint filed against nintendo uh we discussed it a few episodes back sometime recently and that abuse claim has been um settled air quotes uh where they basically (laughs) Nintendo put their their thumb on their nose and wiggled their fingers and pointed at the temp agency that did the the hiring and said this is your yes. your 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 problem to deal with. I I she, love just uh passing the buck to someone else <laughs> when you have the ultimate control. Yeah. Uh sent it to the temp agency where she was paid a uh, 25k in back pay and basically, you know, brushed to the side and told you know, don't kick the don't kick the hornet's nest. You know, um, Mario and Luigi were at her door at uh, ten o'clock at night with a horse head in a bag. <laughs> now it was actually Yoshi head to be more <laughs> on par. I want to know what the damages are. It doesn't call out that number, obviously, because it's a settlement. But I mean, they're going to try to keep as much of it, you know, hidden as possible. Or is the twenty five only- inclusive of back pay da- damages and interest? It's probably I'm I'm reading the contract now. It's probably maybe that's um, what it is. Inclusive, assumes yeah. liability for making whole. Um, that's redacted the name by paying her a total of the twenty five. Man, that's nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. So that's that's back pay and the consequential damages is the twenty five thousand. Which I mean, for Nintendo, that's, that's a drop in the bucket, and they wouldn't care. I'm sure the temp agency also has that built into like a legal fund that they fund that's a that's a very small number for a settlement yeah very very small that's that's pennies to any you know large corporation i I feel like any temp agency would have a a side fund set to the away for legal actions that they have to deal with you know recurring issue that they run into every year where it's like oh we'll just pay off the like 10 people who complain and like continue well, and, on our and, merry way. And it's also insurance is paying that more than likely. Not the not the back pay, um, but the damages, it, depending on a variety of factors, but there there's a potential that insurance is paying a lot of that money. So it's not even coming out of their like actual legal budget. Yeah. Might just change their deductible next year. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, honestly. <laughs> I'd love to see an underwriting process for sexual assault complaint yeah that complaint uh, <laughs> insurance yeah i i would have to look more into it because there are like it's like very nuanced of like when they would protect you you know when they would um right be a part of the you know uh the claim you'd be uh, covered under insurance and when you know it's going to conduct outside that that coverage um but the fact that they paid only twenty five thousand leads me to believe that insurance would pay this out because it's not probably not egregious enough to you know get out of coverage that's just one of those uh we i think we called it 
back when we were discussing this initially, that this was going to end up getting shouldered onto the temp agency, that N- Nintendo wasn't going to have to do anything regarding this because of the contract agreement with the temp agency. Gotta love contract yeah, think, law. I think we did. And another thing that we discuss all the time is, you know, the the never-ending cycle of allegations and abuse that come out of the frat boy culture of Activision Blizzard. Microsoft's going to fix it, though, so it's all good. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, if I know anything, it's that Phil Spencer is going to walk in there in a leather jacket with sunglasses on. He's going to mm-hmm. be just sitting there. He's like, hey, it's cool, Phil. I'm going to fix everything and then slap everyone on the ass equally. Yep. <laughs> equal sounds about right <laughs> but it'll be in a daddy role so. yeah everyone he's gonna be sitting in his uh throne chair at the front of the room and everyone has to come across and lay across his knee for one spank yep, yep exactly unrelated <laughs> but i had a co-worker who was talking about how he has a a daughter a young daughter who uh he like threatened with a spank and she was like, she like turned around smiling and he was like, Oh no, she needs Jesus. <laughs> uh, people are, are hilarious. Yeah. Incredible. Um, yeah. We have another allegation coming out of the Activision blizzard. Uh, again, dark cabal of. Uh, it's going to keep happening. <laughs> I mean, for real, like, we know it was there. It's just going to continue to, to you know, unravel. Um, I think, especially as the longer the the merger deal with Microsoft drags out, um, I think there's probably just more opportunity there to continue to. Um, You're saying that the the failure to curb any of this is what kind of emboldened uh, this manager Miguel uh, Vega. Yeah, to like continue abuse, belittle, insult uh, this um, Miss Doe, and, and this one's pretty bad. Like, yeah, this is bad, dude. Yeah, dude was like honking her breasts and shit, and like poking, and, her like boobs, threatened her with trying revenge to kiss porn. her. Yeah, yes, yeah, which is disgusting, yeah, but, and yeah. it is another one of those reasons why, like, we weren't ready for the internet. The fact that we could do shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine going lives. back to the nineties and describing what the internet was going to be used for? <laughs> <laughs> I think that people have a fucking panic attack. Satanic panic part two. Yeah. Shut it down. Also, if that that should be if there's any time travelers out there, go back to the, the beginning internet. of the internet. <laughs> yeah. Stop the internet. You don't have to stop it forever. Just like, yeah. All we need to do is we need to show the people footage from Terminator, but like the more modern Terminator, <laughs> like this is what's going to happen to your your favorite IP if you let no, the internet show, show them She Hulk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. Like, come on. This like the, this character is going to be twerking with Megan the Stallion, oh and God. like, you know. Uh, the CGI is going to be worse than than Shrek. So, oh my god! Yeah, you know, let's be honest let's... though. If Shrek started twerking. There'd be a whole different reaction. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. It'd be much better. That's the patriarchy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, they're just one of those um, horrible things going on over there at Activision Blizzard. Still, uh, can't really say I'm surprised. Can't really say any of us no. are surprised. No. Like they're just going to keep, you know, doing their thing, and they're going to keep. Microsoft is going to continue to spend money to, you know, hush this down and push it away until the the merger is over, so they can just, you know, finish their acquisition. Uh, mm-hmm. That kind of just, you know, leads us into, you know, the act. Let's just talk about the acquisition a little bit. You know, more more stuff going on regarding. Uh, you know, discussion with various um, boards regarding the merger. Uh, which one was this? This is European boards. Uh, was this the same Brussels uh, one that Jim Ryan went to that we discussed last week? I'm not sure. It might be. It might be their response to like that discussion. 
but uh, either way, Microsoft is basically accusing them of adopting uh, some of Sony's uh, concerns and language regarding the merger and basically are trying to make it out that uh, I think we've said this part in, uh, I mean, they're probably just repeating this over and over again, that uh, there's no way that the third biggest gaming company could ever put the, uh, what, what is Sony, the first largest or the second largest? Yeah. I think uh, one of those second two. basically saying that they can't like a lower tier could never put them out of business because they could just make better games or something like that. I like that they're accusing, accusing the regulator of taking Sony's complaint, like that. This is only Sony complaining like this. It's like, that's, that's such a funny way of wording it when it's Sony's complaints do align with, you know, the people that, these, with the regulators yeah concerned yeah because like, they're and, concerned for the consumer and they happen to be aligned <laughs> well, yeah exactly and see microsoft and, has been doing a real good job of making their message be that they're for the consumer everything they're doing is for the best betterment of gamers because they got good lawyers and know that antitrust concerns are strictly concerned with consumer rights and you know um and freedom to purchase and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, good on them that that's, you know, the route that they're taking, that's the messaging, but it's not unusual to see UK regulators give a little more pushback on mergers than U S regulators. Cause the U S at the end of the day is just, you know, three corporations and a fucking trench coat. So the U S regulators are leaning back in their chairs, smelling the stack of money. That was yeah. just handed to them. Yeah, exactly. Through legal means, you know, not not saying that these regulators are taking bribes. Uh, no, le- just, legal you know, lobbying. I, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, th- this is unsurprising. And, and at the end of the day, you know, it's th- the deal will probably still go through, and it'll just yeah. be you know virtue signaling on the UK regulators' part. And that's and that's not to mention the reporting done this week by uh, I forget who who published the article because it's outside of our general purview. But there was an article, there was a good amount of reporting done about how all of these regulators, like over fifty percent of their employees, are invested directly with the companies they're regulating. So yeah. even if they're not getting directly right. bribed, they're just trading on the information yeah. they know in getting essentially bribed that way by letting decision making uh you know they'll just do what they know will improve the stock price for them so don't you love insider trading that is legalized Legalized. yeah it's completely fair and balanced because one day i will get to insider trade and then i will (laughs) no i mean the best way to insider trade is just follow uh nancy pelosi's husband's investments that there's, man's websites genius. Devoted to, there's websites devoted to tracking his purchases and sales on the, on the stock market. Yeah, his portfolio. Yeah. They make, he, he's, you know, I don't think that has anything to do with the fact that Nancy Pelosi has lots of information about these No, these he's corporations. Just incredibly he's just a genius. savvy businessman. Yeah. yeah. The it, man knew well ahead of time to dump NVIDIA stock before... <laughs> Uh, the banning on sales of hardware to um, certain countries. He knew ahead of time. It's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. A incredible foresight. Great, great yeah. hunch. How many quaaludes did he have to take? <laughs> you know, he still has them too. <laughs> he definitely you know? does. They all have them. Those upper. They buttons, all have the, them. the lizards. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, oh man. Uh, yeah, they have talking... access to like a special vault. Where those have them all locked. Maybe up. that's why I should. Be, that's why we should be politicians. I mean, it's the only reason. <laughs> Access to quaaludes. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. Um, Bring quaaludes back. Uh, moving right along on that note, also on that platform. message right there. That's that's episode <laughs> title. Bring back quaaludes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, we were talking about you know insider trading and you know whatnot so let's talk a little uh you know some hard sales numbers and whatnot we got going on here we'll start with microsoft and game pass 
because we were just discussing, you know, the Activision Blizzard, uh, Blizzard merger. So let's talk about how Xbox, um, according to some sources, pulled in $16.29 billion last year um, and $2.9 billion of that coming directly from Game Pass. That's a pretty large margin coming from uh, a subscription service. I mean, it makes sense, though. Subscription service that you could play on your phone, on your PC, on your fucking tablet, you know, on your Xbox. Honestly, I well, there's other places you could play it, too, and we'll talk about yeah. that in a little bit. Yeah, um, so exactly. They, yeah, they're putting they're trying to put Game Pass everywhere because obviously it's it's the whole discussion of like, like, let's get into like Sigma male grind set mind for a second here. It's, you know, it's passive income versus, you know, active I'm always income. in that mindset and uh, subscription mm-hmm. models are passive income to for these companies. You, you know, you set up the infrastructure, you let it go and you basically just bankroll on people, you know, recurring payments every month. Yeah, whether or not they're using getting their subscription. Yeah, no, like whether or not Literally. they're using it. One, I'm one it's of like those many- people. <laughs> I think I paid for Game Pass for like twelve, no, over twelve months of the yeah, like thirteen of the last eighteen months, and I probably used it for four of those. Yeah, it's a very smart model. You pay, you charge a very small amount of money. Just the amount that people won't notice if it's gone month to month. And you basically just like you get them to the point where they bake that into their budget, essentially their mental like calculation of what there's like what the money should be each month. And they kind of just forget what it is. It's like I like to go through and like check my streaming services every now and then to see like if I even need to keep like, oh, when's the last time I used um Netflix. Like when's the last time I used Amazon? It's like, if these aren't getting used very frequently, I need to stop recurring them because like death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. And one thing that's interesting to me is what's going to happen when they release the, um, the family package, like the, the Nintendo online has, because, you know, this is talking about sales numbers. So that's different. Than what I'm gonna talk about now, like their subscription numbers being so those, high. those are inflated. I mean, yes, exactly. That's that's my point. But I would also think that the sales numbers are gonna go down because you know those subscription numbers are inflated because not only are you capturing, you know, the person that uh, does the free trial and then you know has a recurring payment for one month and then cancels it. Or the, you know the people that recur forever and never use it. I mean, the the most predatory about. one I've seen was they offered me three months free, but if I was to redeem the three months free, I had to lock in to six months of recurring payments. After that, oh, I haven't seen that one. That's interesting. But yeah, so I mean, like, wow. it, you know, once you get that family plan in, and it's four people paying twenty five dollars together rather than four people paying fifteen dollars each. I just wonder how that's going to affect, you know, their continued growth as capitalism. You know, I mean, uh, they're right now in the the streaming platform phase of just continual growth and encroaching the market until you've basically forced everyone off their platforms onto yours. And they're, they're doing their best to try to spread. There was rumor that they tried to pay PlayStation to put game pass on PlayStation. Um, Yeah, I'm sure. And there was discussion years ago when wow. they were starting to get real buddy buddy with uh, Nintendo that they were trying to put Game Pass X Cloud on Switch. Um, and uh, Nintendo, being who they are, obviously weren't really keen on that because mm-hmm. Nintendo wants you playing Nintendo games on Nintendo consoles. Um, and I mean, to good reason, In too. The because, Nintendo, like, the Nintendo part. Switch here, like the Nintendo Switch here, has sold 113.56 million consoles. Yeah, it's an absurd number. And like, obviously, there are definitely recurring purchases there. I am one of them. I have two because I have my launch day switch and I have my switch OLED. There are definitely families out there who I have spoken to who have a switch for mom and dad, maybe two, a switch light for the kiddo. Yep. Like, but yeah, we're talking 113.56 million consoles sold. Um, the PS2, which is the highest selling console of all time, is I believe 152 million off the top of my head. 
Um, and I can easily see Nintendo riding the Switch hardware life cycle for at least two more years, or at least maybe one more iteration that they can keep in the Switch family to bump those sales up until they pass the PlayStation 2. I don't think they're going to dump the Switch until they beat the PlayStation 2's all-time lifetime sales. I think Nintendo is petty enough to do that. I think you're probably right about it. Yeah, and like they fucking ride consoles forever. Yeah. Like they rode the 3DS for I mean even just the regular long. DS. I mean the yeah. DS had what DS, DSI, DS Lite. Yep. Yeah. And then the 3DS is basically an iteration on that. So like again, we're exactly. talking Yeah, the DS was 2004. Yeah. It came out. I remember Crap. I had the the big chunky silver one. Yep, same. OG with like the, the very not responsive stylus. The 3DS came out in 2011. Wow. And ran till 2020. Wow. They were made. Nine years of the 3DS and um, 2004. Yeah, seven years of the DS. And I kind of like to combine those two uh, catalogs because they're very similar. They're the same. Yeah, they're pretty. It's like the 3DS could play DS games. So, like, there's the. I mean, the only. And they. Most of. So many of the games moved away from the 3D, even yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Mo- complete, there was only one Pokemon game that uses the 3D function. Then the rest that were made for the 3DS scrapped it. So it's really Do you remember one, but... when they released the new 3DS with the thumb nub built on? Yep. And there were only like three games that used it in its entire life cycle. Or like three games that were only playable on the new 3DS. Yeah, that? I thought that was funny. Um but like, I'm not going to knock them for their design there. They were really good about backwards compatibility with their handhelds. The old DS had the, yeah. the Game Boy Advance yep. cartridge slot. Mm-hmm. Even some and of the... Th- oh, no, it was the... Like, I don't the think DS the 3DS Lite, had the, the Game Boy no, cartridge. It was, no, it was like the DS Lite. Actually, yeah. Right um, but yeah, we have some more sales numbers here. Uh, PS5 in those same sales charts, um, 23.99 million. So it's essentially 24 million units. Uh you know, still going through hardware shortages, even though they have stated that they've ramped up PS5 production three times uh, year over year, and that there are more consoles in the wild now than there ever have been. Uh, 24 million is still a lot of consoles, even for the hardware shortages. That's a big number. Hopefully those are mm-hmm. all in, you know, hands of consumers and, and not just sitting in warehouses. And, and pl- Sony has said they're forecasting 30 million consoles Souls yeah, for 2023 next year. Sold. That's so like, well, huge. yeah, because they're, they're trying to bit ramp up for a big PSVR 2 launch next year. So it would make sense that they would want more consoles in the wild to support that. Probably a big old bundle with the two of them. Yeah. You know, like maybe like an $800 bundle with both. Yeah. I've, well, I'm, I'm predicting the PSVR 2 to be like 400 bucks. Yeah, I think so. Like, there's no way that thing sells for under $400. Like, I can't see it. Yeah, that that'd be a, they'd be taking a big loss there. Yeah, and like the, the the hardware spec on it alone, we'll get there. We have some discussion about some uh, new hardware specking. Yes. But to wrap up the sales numbers, then you know we had Xbox Series X and S combined uh, at seventeen point two three million, which I'm actually a little surprised by. I think that that sounds low. Oh, really? I was surprised the other way. Well, the only reason I'm surprised low is because the Xbox Series S is so readily available mm-hmm. that I would think there would be a more flooded market for the cheaper console. Yeah, but this is the I also, this is the trade off they made with how they have yeah. built their model. Exactly. I was just going to say with Game Pass, like there wasn't a, truly a need for some Xbox players to upgrade from the one to the X. You know, like unless you're like truly, you know, want the next gen console. But if you're just like more of a casual game, you know, a casual player that probably would have upgraded to the X, but had, you know, could instead pay $15 a month and not have to do so and just play on the Xbox One. You know, you're going to do that or play yeah, on your or computer the, or, or your phone. The PC. Or your yeah. TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I do. I do think the. We we were talking about this at the beginning of the segment, but just the fact that the that Game Pass number is solely console Game Pass revenue. That's the part of it that is surprising to me. 
Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Yes, that's it's the, only the for Xbox. It's only for oh. Xbox. So that's a oh, that's wow. pretty impressive. I mean, not to I not to say it this way in a broad sense, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna put my finger on my nose here and stick it out a little bit. I have a feeling that console gamers are a lot easier to forget their subscription services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, but it's also interesting to me because like it, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, it's not necessarily you get, you tied get to your both. console. Yeah. Like I had it and I was I largely played on my PC. I had the ultimate. So I would be what counted in that, but I never touched it on my Xbox One. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows companies like to massage numbers in their favor. Yeah, it's course. it's not a new practice in any means. Uh, my personal favorite are Tesla's uh, zero to sixty claims which are always 0.3 seconds uh, faster than they actually are because they do a a rolling start versus a stop start. Nice. Their newest Uh, uh, car is like two under two seconds. Well, yeah. So that's the, they they needed to find a way to make it 1.99 seconds because Elon likes 1.99 seconds. Yeah. And I know what it's like to work for someone who becomes obsessed with a number that isn't real. Um, (laughs) Because the actual testing on the car has consistently put it at two point uh, two eight. Yeah. Because again, that's what happens when you do the difference of a, a rolling start, where you start the measure, the timing on the back wheel braking plane, versus when the front wheels break the plane. That's interesting. Yeah, it's it's measurement uh, bias. I've had to do it before for marketing. It sucks. <laughs> It's like, as an engineer, you sit there and you're like, yeah, but this isn't a real test. And like, yeah, but we don't care about the real test. And it's like, yeah. but I do. Well, and that's why you're not making the big bucks. Yeah. And the PR people are. <laughs> um, but we, we've kind of beat around the bush a little bit here. Um, you know, we've talked about how Game Pass, you know, they're trying to put it everywhere. You know, they tried to put it on, you know, Sony. They tried to put it on Nintendo. The big news here is that they're putting it on Meta. You get, your Meta Quest headsets are now going to come with xCloud compatibility where you could put your headset on and play on a virtual 65 inch TV and play X cloud through that. And I'm curious your opinions on this. I won't taint my opinion in here first, but uh, that's definitely a a combination of companies. I trust. (laughs) I mean, good for Microsoft, uh, you know, licensing their, their product to the meta sucks for meta, probably taking a nice hit on something that will never really truly come to fruition. I think it reeks of meta desperation yeah. where they're trying to get more people, trying to get more people to get meta headsets mm-hmm. no, I agree. right after they raised the base price by a hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to do that dropped. because they paid a nice licensing fee to get the fucking Xbox game pass on there. And it's just X cloud. Cause remember right now, the meta quest two headset is a glorified cell phone strapped to your head. <laughs> um, Which is crazy. So what are you going to play? That's like the pro too. Nine racing. No, you could, you could play it. You're just going to be playing it cloud streaming. You're going to be playing it off of other hardware, either your Xbox or PC uh, streamed to your headset or off of their cloud computing servers via and remember, this is a wireless headset, so you're very likely playing this through Wi-Fi. Ugh. So, like, your your mileage may very considerably vary. Just, but like, I can't imagine ability to play. I can't imagine wanting to put my VR headset on to play regular games on a fake TV. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll pass. That, on that's that. that's I like the the money. weird thing that people like they watch like movies in VR where it's like at like a movie theater in your living room. Mm-hmm. It's like those headsets are hot and heavy, man. Like, I don't know if you want to wear that for like two plus hours, three plus hours. Yeah. Not only is like the headset getting hot itself, but just like having that over your eyes like that for so long. So, it's also, yeah, really not good for your vision. Uh, when I went to my eye doctor, I asked about uh, prescription VR lenses and they basically like finger wag me and they're like, your eyes are so bad. Like, please don't do that to them. <laughs> please don't ever use VR ever. hilarious yeah it was a good time uh but yeah we've kind of we've been discussing it so you know meta 
they have the Quest 2 that they just raised the price on because they've had this rumored MetaQuest Pro that's been, you know, guerrilla marketing techniques. You know, they've had the the fake release of it in a hotel room that someone like found by accident, like an engineering sample or something. Uh, but they finally unveiled their new MetaQuest Pro headset starting at $1,500. Can I get a yikes in wow. the chat? Wow. That is, wow. that is a lot of fucking money to spend on a VR headset. Um, it's not going to be good. by not a gaming company. Yeah. yeah. Like you can get a valve index headset for a thousand. And like, that is in my opinion, overkill. Um, Fifteen hundred. Yeah, well, and the technology is just not there to be paying that fucking price for. No, absolutely not. Like this, this headset, like there are, there's some interesting stuff they have going on hardware wise that I do find, I do want to talk about. Um, but like I'm gonna bring up again, this thing is running a Snapdragon XR2 Plus processor, which is a glorified smartphone processor. Yeah. yeah. Like that's crazy. You're you're, you're buying yeah, this headset like for fifteen hundred dollars for standalone VR. Cause you don't want to be tethered to a computer. You can tether, you can plug in, but like you're buying this to not be tethered to a computer. And you're basically strapping like your average Android smartphone flagship to your face. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're not real. even like a S 21 or, you know, no, like, the, like the an, a, a very like average a flagship. Yeah. Like the $800 flagships, not the $1,200 flagships. Yeah. Um, like their target market here is very, very obvious who they're going after. They're going after companies because everyone knows tech makes the most money off licensing hardware to companies, hardware and software, I should say, yeah. because they want the MetaQuest Pro headset to be the defunct metaverse headset for corporations to have metaverse Fucking meetings. Fucking virtual meetings. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. $1,500 to... <laughs> have a fucking meeting that could be an email in the Dude. metaverse <laughs> the, my, the, my new engineering manager said I'll that the first myself. thing he's yeah. doing when he gets in minecraft is reducing the amount of meetings we're having yeah the, the, for sure like what the day the day they tell me i have to wear a vr headset to attend a virtual meeting it is the day i quit but can you imagine so you're sitting in your vr metaverse meeting and now that um that one coworker who everyone's a little uncomfortable with, you can see his avatar staring at your elbow as you're sitting next to him. As you find out he has an, an elbow fetish of some sort. Yeah. But like, there is the personal space bubble now in meta. Oh, so you oh, can't oh. get that close. A, a, a new piece of tech that was in uh, VR chat. Six really years honk ago. your tits. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, to, it's, it's a, I get why they're targeting that market because sure. corporations are real dumb when it comes to spending money on tech. Well, they want to be on the cutting edge. You yeah. Know? And they don't understand what the cutting edge is or what they need <laughs> yeah. for it. And usually there's some poor IT blade. person on the end of this who doesn't get a say in anything. Yep. Who's basically being told to set all this up. Who's grumbling to himself about how he should have just taken the, the programming job and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's telling them all the reasons why this is stupid. And they're like, no, you're going to do this. You are going to install this for us. You are going to troubleshoot it. Every time that an 85-year-old partner that tries to put on this headset. Has a seizure. Yeah, exactly. Or, or can't figure out how to fucking turn it on or mute himself in VR as he's, you know, wanking off to the elbow. That yeah, so th this new headset... Um because of the standalone nature, not only does it have a uh, better camera pass through on the headset itself for more uh, immersive feeling in the moment uh, pass through, but the controllers yeah. themselves have controllers and their own processors in them to try to deal with the issues I've discussed before of inside out tracking, where like if your controllers lose sight of the headset, you lose mm. control of your hands in the metaverse, whatever, metaverse. in your VR game. Uh, so now this should theoretically help some of that independent control. And I think the Sony controllers have this as well for PSVR 2. Yeah. Um, but what I, I was getting do. at here is what you're going to be seeing is you're going to be seeing much more accurate partners with their hands on their junk during VR meetings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're not, you're not wrong about that. That movement is going to be very smooth. 
but they're claiming that they've got a new lens shape going on here, 40% slimmer than the Quest 2 lenses. Like, cool. Uh, yeah, op- because when you're yeah, fucking 85 okay. years old in a corporate meeting putting a fucking VR headset on, yeah, you don't want your neck the, the, the counterweight pulls their head <laughs> down. Uh, it's too much liability. I find optics design fascinating, like the the difference of like concave convex lenses and how you can like refract light for it. I think it's a fascinating science. Uh, I wish I was able to focus on it more in physics in college. Um, but they're also this is the one that I kind wish of I did un- science. <laughs> this this one is the one that kind of uh, like throws me for a loop here. So first things first, LCD screen in the year twenty twenty two of our Lord. <laughs> which I think is fucking hilarious for Crazy. a fifteen hundred dollar device. Um, that, that's probably the the craziest thing that's going on here to me. It's like when, when everyone is shifting to OLED, AMOLED, these brighter, yeah. more color accurate screens. We're spending fifteen hundred dollars for technology that's been around since two thousand six. Yeah. Um. So they're they're claiming seems like a good. At least it wasn't plasma. <laughs> <laughs> At least we didn't get a plasma screen. You fucking people's eyes just, just burn, burn your out. eyeballs out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the heat coming off that alone. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Just burning your eyeballs. The, on their website, they they make some broad claims. I hated their tech specs on their website. Uh, it is 100% written to fool some, uh, some CEO. Oh, for sure. It's, it, I mean, that's it's all not, marketing. It's not actual fucking numbers. Like the actual tech spec area is all just like 37% more pixels per inch than Quest 2. <laughs> mm. It's like, I would hope so. I'm spending 1100 more dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like they still 1100% low, better. Low yeah. No, that's like, they don't give you uh, the, the individual facts. aspect ratio. They don't give you the individual, uh, actual um definition of each screen for the eye we don't get a field of view like they're they're being really coy with their stats for a 1500 dollars headset again which screams to me that they're trying to rip off some like 80 year old ceo who thinks that work from home is ruining his company and that he needs, he needs to, to be able to micromanage better yeah in the in the metaverse like this is just like the tip of the iceberg where we, like i think meta is drowning a little bit right now mm-hmm. like i think they're hemorrhaging money in a way that they were not expecting and it's starting to really show some real world effects i know uh we've kind of were talking about it beforehand but like we're losing a lot like wall street is losing a lot of faith in facebook right now oh yeah like they saw this release and they were not impressed that's not good and facebook facebook stock price has been just a steep a steep cliff has been a frown has been a frowny face. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, the, the other uh, meta quest thing that I really enjoyed was the, that they gave the avatars legs, but it turns out in the preview of finally adding legs to the avatars, uh, mm-hmm. they weren't actually using the data, the soft, the program software, whatever that does it. They were literally mo-capping Zuckerberg and the woman he was demonstrating it with. So yeah. not even Hilarious. using what they're That, that was one of the, the things cited by Wall Street losing faith in them. They were like, a big reveal was legs on avatars. And like, <laughs> but, but that's crazy because th- that's crazy to me because every fucking uh, like marketing release that Elon Musk has done for Tesla and any of his other products has literally been the same thing. The fucking uh, Model S was a Mercedes that had magnetic body panels on it. Like his Cyber super truck. computers. Cyber yeah, truck. like it, his super computers were, glass. <laughs> his super computers were like a glorified, like fucking, you know, probably didn't even have a GPU in it that was just like streaming something else from another computer and, you know, uh, just it's all the appearance of parts. doing things. Yeah, no, exactly. You spend so much time point. faking it that you could have been actually doing to make something real. Yep. It's hilarious yep. to me. But I will I love being on the other side of that. But I will I will give Elon credit in that those things look significantly cooler and better than anything close to the metaverse. 
Yes, because he's dealing with like actual material yeah. parts. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah, the metaverse is never going to look cool because it's going to, it's yeah. virtual. Having yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's like, that's a fair te- point. Tesla, for all the shit that I'll give them, they make they've done a really good job of making themselves the Apple of tech, mm-hmm. where they have this premium branding and Apple they make, of car tech. Yeah, sorry, car tech, I should say. Um, but they, they do this really good job of like making their stuff look premium, even though, you know, the panels don't fucking align correctly. Oh, and, and like, might, and you know, die as soon as you touch fire, it. You... Well, that's the thing. Like it, they, they look nice, but like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a Tesla, but there are Ubers out yes. here that are Teslas. It's cheap. As soon as you get yeah, in, yeah. it's so cheap. Everything well, is even, so cheap. Like the leather is pretty much just fucking like plastic. It's like worse yeah, than vinyl. Everything feels like just the cheapest quality plastic you could use. It's so cheap. Well, yeah, because if you get, if you give people the status symbol feeling without having to put status symbol mm-hmm. quality in, that yeah. is a marketing boom. Do you know how much money you make on that? Yeah. And that's no. part of the reason why Apple went with like lower model, you know, they the like the iPhone SE and because people were just like, I want an iPhone. I want that status symbol of having an iPhone. Like there, there was a, a poll that came out recently that and like the polling it was 13 to 17 year olds from like the midwest or something like that and they had like 2,000 of them that they interviewed great or demographic something. yeah and like 87 percent of their interviewed uh in that demographic had an iphone and had said that they would exclude people from their friend group for not having one my girlfriend <laughs> tries to exclude me for having an android <laughs> Every time I read those articles, I get like seven years older and I become, uh, I slowly start to morph into Clint Eastwood from, uh, what's it called? Gran Turismo. Yeah, Gran, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. <laughs> Just like Gran old Torino. manning on my porch. Gran Torino. Gran Torino. Yeah. Yeah. Gran Torino. <laughs> yeah, old manning on my porch. Just her zoomers. Um, but to, we're, we're getting we're getting close to the end here to kind of tie it back together. Um, just some quick bullet points here to wrap up the episode. Uh, Got to give a little credit to NVIDIA for showing a little bit of self-awareness here. Uh, they're not going to be launching the 12 gigabyte version of the 4080 next month alongside the 16 gigabyte as they try to look for a better naming convention because it is kind of bullshit to have two of the same card with different RAM uh, values. Yeah. Um, they, they saw customer backlash and they listened to it. Uh, not that they have to, they own the market essentially. Yeah. Cause you know, did you see the Intel uh, advertisement I sent you guys? Yes. It, Intel, like I'm not going to make fun of Intel right now because like more competition on a market is good. Even if it is from a super, a super giant like Intel yep. and like, it's going to take them a little bit to get into the GPU market and like find their niche. Uh, Because like AMD found their niche as being just like the hottest, literally, card to get the most frames in gaming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, NVIDIA focuses more on like, oh, we're good at gaming and like and professional stuff, you know, whereas Intel, I think, is going to find a good market in just professional grade. uh, Yeah, I agree. Like good for like rendering and stuff like that. Which, uh, again, it'll be it's just good to have competition. I'm just glad to see NVIDIA. Uh, pulling back the release of the 12 gig 4080 Um, it didn't make sense the price point makes no sense if you look at the performance values compared to the 16 gig uh, it really should probably be called like a 4075 or something like that it's like an in a gap between the 4070 and 4080 Mm -hmm. where it's like you get the extra ram value but they haven't showed the 4070 series or anything like that off yet because they're obviously trying to jump on the fomo of the highest card buyers first and like it, it's trickle down economics, baby. Uh, you're going to get the people who buy the, the highest tier GPU every year, and then they're going to sell it. And then you're going to get a, a secondary buyer who's going to buy that 3090 Ti that they bought that's had one year of usage, and they're going to get it for like 60% MSRP. And like eventually that GPU is going to make its way down to little Timmy <laughs> getting his first gaming rig. Well, and then when we're at like, you know, 70 series like you know uh in five years or whatever and we have another fucking crisis and another supply chain issue and people will be selling uh you know 10 year old uh 30 series for fucking you know 
two thousand dollars like people were trying to f- sell uh what were they like seven tens the gts i mean there was tens. i mean the gpu market got a little crazy there for a second uh there, there was a brief moment where i was like wow i really should have just held on to my two 1080s and just <clears throat> waited till the gpu market crashed and sold them for a thousand bucks a piece yeah. gpus yeah. that mind you i bought for like 500 bucks yeah years uh, ago yeah um but yeah, uh, good on them. Uh, I still don't respect why they killed EVGA's GPU uh, market with their policies, but oh well. Um, getting into the end here, we got a couple release dates since our last episode. Uh, both Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden are coming to modern consoles and Steam on January 19th, 2023. Uh, Persona 4 Golden's already on Steam. That's been on Steam for a couple of years now. Um, and then we get Miles, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is coming to Steam on November 18th, that. 2022. Little upset because it is the same day as Pokemon and mm. they're making me pick. I will be picking Pokemon, but not a shocker. I mean, that that's a decent one to because it's like going to be $40 MSRP. Um, yeah. If you wait like a little bit, you could probably find yeah, that for 20 on bucks sale. on sale. Yeah. And that's very a very good $20 spent. Uh, oh, sure. I really enjoyed Miles Morales on PS5. I don't know if anyone else has had any mileage with it. It's, it's, uh, it's a good game. I enjoyed it. It's like I'm excited for Spider-Man 2. I think Miles' power set is unique and fun. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to play with that power, like the electroshock, all that yep. stuff. The, the Venom powers, as they call it, which I found a little weird nomering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, strange strange name our, our last to wrap up the episode we have two more quick stories here uh what i what i uh, favorably called sicko shit in the notes mm-hmm. uh so first we have people have spotted the xbox streaming stick on phil spencer's back shelf during a video um well what they believe to be the xbox yeah. streaming stick it really could just be any fucking streaming stick they're all black little rectangles with an could hdmi be a for it roku yeah like like we know they're making this so obviously there's the speculation that of course they're going to have prototypes hiding around and like companies love easter eggs and shit like that hiding in the background but it's like i don't know what the big surprise expectations sure. are it's going to be a black streaming stick with the xbox logo embossed on one side uh, there's going to be a USB port. Uh, yeah, might be USB C instead oh, yeah. who, of micro who? USB, like who? all the others. Even though uh, <laughs> most modern TVs still come with USB A ports. Woo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's wrap up with the last story of the day. Uh, My favorite a story that Mike has been ch- champing at the bit <laughs> for. Uh, hungry for pizza, you might say. Uh, you know, subliminal messaging here. Order pizza, folks. It's good for you. It's got <laughs> vegetables in it, like tomatoes. Yeah, it's it a is group. a vegetable, according to Michelle Obama. So, um, but yeah, apparently gamers have figured out a way to order. Uh, was it Domino's Pizza Domino's, through a fucking yeah. gaming API? On um, what was it, Oblivion? Oh, I thought it was uh, Skyrim. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so, Oblivion. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oblivion, yeah. So you're you're sitting there playing a 15 year old RPG on your uh, 27 year old gaming PC, <laughs> choking itself to death, and you're like, "Oh, I can't reach my phone, you know." But I'm real hungry, and I'd love some Domino's uh, bread twists and a medium <laughs> deep dish pizza. Yeah, yeah, the deep dish, exactly. Or no, the the what's the the pan? Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, the it's like Detroit style pan pizza or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, ben swears by the pan pizza at Domino's, and I do agree. He he is right. It's he the best one. of their pizzas. I'll give you that yeah, credit. As That's someone true. who lives in a town who's like, if you're lazy and don't want to pay fifty dollars for DoorDash, your only delivery choice is Domino's, and they will be here in fifteen minutes, <laughs> cooked or uncooked. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no, but cooked. My favorite part about this is like, this is what the metaverse should be. You know what? I should be able to play my video games. I should be in Assassin's Creed, killing some Greeks. Go you should up to be able diner. to go to a, a virtual food court, order McDonald's. Yep, no, 
you know, I want to go up to some some Greek dude and then it, it orders me Greek food from a Greek diner down the street and I get it delivered. And then when Demetrios comes to the fucking door, I assassinate him like I'm uh, Alexios in the game. You, you got your headset <laughs> on, you walk to the door, you open the door, you see a virtual projection of the Greek uh, delivery boy over it. Yep. <laughs> and I, I hold Y for my stealth attack and right in the neck. But, no, but like, honestly, like that, if we're going to have the metaverse, fuck, you know, meetings in the metaverse. I just want to be able to order pizza while I'm playing a game. So I don't have to yeah. pick up my phone, just talk to the other, you know, NPC in the game. Perfect. He orders me some dominoes. Okay. It's beautiful. I, I heard you say pick up the phone and order something from Domino's. I'm just letting you know that that is not the regular experience for your average millennial. Who is, who is I, I taking at least the... two anti-anxiety medications before ordering through the app? Well, I, I meant through the app, not an actual <laughs> phone call, but the fact that I have to pick up my phone to do that. I, I yeah, still have no, to pick right. up my phone to call restaurants because most of the restaurants up here don't have websites. Yeah, it's not surprising. I hate making phone calls and I have to do it all the time. It's miserable. I had to do a phone call with a vendor for work the other day. And like 20 minutes into this vendor phone call, I am just like slowly melting into my chair, waiting for death to encompass me. <laughs> but I think we're going to call it there, folks. That's uh, let's end it on gamers ordering pizza through uh, oblivion. Mm-hmm. Only good Bring memories. Every game. Made. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the episode, folks. Uh, don't forget to check us out on, you know, we got the old Twitch, you know, throw us the uh, prime sub, you know, if you've got, amazon prime you can connect it to your twitch account for free and uh you can go to your favorite leftist gaming channel you know campaign comrades no underscore anymore right no underscore just campaign comrades yep over on twitch.tv and uh you can hit that prime sub button and give us that prime sub you know get access to our emotes watch our channel ad free uh, check out all the great gaming content we got going on. You know, we might get some Nuzlocke runs at some point. We might be playing some more PGA or some 2K. Um, might be playing some waifu games. You never know. You never know what's going on in these waters. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to check us out on all the social medias, you know, all the the TikToks and all the whatnots. We're not on TikTok, by the way. Don't don't actually go look there. You won't find it. Um, yeah, we got... Uh, cut the mic gaming at tcg player yeah check out my uh my store go buy some cards don't leave me bad reviews i'll find you five star reviews only yeah but yeah i think that's about to be it for the uh the episode folks we'll see you next week and have a good week Bye. bye bye